Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be working on our OSCP testing profile machine. Um Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna need you to type in HTTP forward slash pentesting.com and we'll go ahead and get started. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> <coughs> sorry, I had to go back and fix my makeup. And I also got a haircut too, so. But uh, today, <laughs> We are actually going to be tackling the box called Jerry on Hack the Box. Um, Jerry is going to be a little bit of a deep dive into content management systems and uh, Apache Tomcat and how that can be leveraged to exploit different vulnerabilities and ultimately gain root on a system through an open web server. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. That's literally exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get right after this. The first thing that we're going to want to do is spawn a new terminal window here. Now, uh, if you want your terminal to look something like this, uh, I highly recommend you go check out my terminal video that I'll throw up in the card above, but uh, that's totally besides the point, and let's go ahead and you know keep going on with this video. So, first thing that we want to do is we want to make a directory for us to store our stuff in, so I'm going to actually name this Jerry. Um, and I'm gonna name it with the IP address of the box just so we have it handy. Um, and in my case, it's 10, 10, 10, 95. And then we're going to CD to that. And actually, instead of typing that all out, I'm just going to do this so I can auto-complete. And now we have it right there uh, if we need it, it's handy. So now that we have that made, uh, let's go ahead and kick off an nmap scan just to get an idea of what exists on this machine. So to do that, we're gonna do sudo and map and then we're going to do capital P lowercase n to skip the ping discovery phase here because we know that the actual uh, target is alive on the network there's no reason to need to discover it uh, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do dash lowercase s capital V capital C that is actually two commands smushed together so you'll see do people do dash lowercase s capital V that's the version scanning um, and then you'll also see people do dash lowercase s capital C that's going to run default scripts on any service that's identified so you can actually just smush those together and do dash lowercase s capital v capital c next thing that we're going to do is dash capital t and then four so that is the template scanning um, and it's actually just for speed so one being the slowest five the fastest i find four to be a great middle ground and really just give you um, a good healthy balance of speed and accuracy next thing that we want to do is pretty much just simply paste in our ip address so i'm going to do 10 10 10 95 in my case it will be different for you most likely um, but then we just need to save our output so i'm going to do lowercase o capital a to save our output to all formats and then the target file name which in this case i'm just going to do tcp scan so i'm going to go ahead and let this run and then i'll cut over to once the nmap scan is done running Okay, so our Nmap scan is actually done running, um, and if you see, I did just clear it and then cat it out because I do use a utility that provides us a little bit more colored output uh, when you cat things out. So you can see we got uh, basically only one port open, so we know this is what we're going to be attacking. It's port 8080, and it looks like there is a web server uh, denoted by the fact that the service is HTTP. We see it's Apache Tomcat, um, and it has the JSP engine. So right off the bat, we know that this is running some sort of Java engine. It's going to be a Java web application. Uh, that's great to know. Uh, we know it's Apache Tomcat. We even get the uh, version number, the very specific version number, the 7.0.88, uh, which is a very early version of Apache Tomcat. So, you know, probably some vulnerability associated with that. But let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, go ahead and check that out. So to do that, all we need to do is copy our IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here and grab our IP address. So we're just going to grab that IP and then we can come over to the 
address bar here and do HTTP forward slash forward slash and then the IP paste it in and then remember that that was on port 8080 so we actually need to do colon 8080 and then another forward slash and that will actually redirect us to the correct uh, endpoint there. So let's see, it looks like we have the default installation page for Apache Tomcat. Now, if we're poking around, um, doesn't look like there's a ton that we, you know, need right out of the gate here. It looks like we even have a link to the manager application, which is super important. And uh, spoiler alert, this is what we're going to want to click on. So we go ahead and click on this. We're going to be prompted for a username and a password. Now I'm going to leave, leave a GitHub link in the description below with a list of all the possible uh, username and passwords, uh, the default usernames and passwords for the manager manager portion of Apache Tomcat. Uh, it's not super long and if you sat here and guessed it you would absolutely get it because it's only about you know there's only about 10 default credentials so you'd totally get it. I'm going to save us the runaround and show you guys exactly what it is. The username is really just going to be Tomcat in the majority of the cases. Uh, in this case, the password is actually secret. Um, there's a three instead of the first E. So it's S3CRET as the password. And then if you hit enter, we're not going to save it because we don't need to. We can actually see that we are inside of the admin portion of this web application. Now, let me go ahead and blow this up just you know, a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on here. But if you were to look around, um, you would eventually stumble upon this section called deploy and it says deploy directory or war file located on the server. Now, war files are super awesome and this is automatically looking like file upload. Now file upload is pretty much a pot of gold when you're looking at web applications uh, or trying to get a foothold via web applications because one it can either give us a web shell which is a semi interactive shell or we can use it to get a reverse shell which is a fully interactive shell and can lead to complete compromise because then we can do things like privilege escalation. Um, in this case uh, we want to leverage exactly that. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a WAR file, it stands for Web Application Resource. And really what it is, is it's kind of just like a zip archive of a bunch of different utilities that a website can use. So it could be like a JAR file. So um, it could be a JSP file. It could be CSS, anything related to the web server that it might want. Now we can upload a WAR file, but you might be thinking, okay, we can upload a WAR file. What is that actually going to do? So I'll show you really quick. If we go back over to our terminal, we can actually use MSF Venom to generate a malicious war file that contains shellcode or a payload that's going to send us a reverse shell back to us when we navigate to that file. Now, this is a cool little trick. Um, I'm going to show you guys. We're going to start out, we're going to do MSF Venom, and then we're going to do dash P to specify the payload type. Now, in this case, we want to do Windows forward slash shell underscore reverse underscore TCP. Now, this is one of the two types of payloads that you can choose. And uh, the other is just going to be, I believe it's just uh, shell TCP or some or reverse TCP. Uh, one of the two, it doesn't have the underscores. Now the underscores show a stageless payload. So the difference between a staged payload and a stageless payload is that a stageless payload is all encompassed in one entity. So the one payload has all of the shell code needed to send us a reverse shell back, whereas a staged payload, uh, just like the name implies, is going to send the payload in stages or incrementally. It kind of builds upon itself for different functionality. Now in our case, we really want that stageless payload because it's all encompassed, we just need it in one shebang. So we'll keep that as is, but the next thing that we need to set is the L host. And I'm actually just going to capitalize this so it's a little bit more obvious. So we'll do L host. Now we need our IP address on the ton zero interface. So I'll show you guys how to get that if you don't know. So I'm going to split the terminal here just so we can see. And I'm going to clear this side. Now, if you just run if config, you should be looking for the ton zero interface because that's the hack the box interface. So I'm going to go ahead and copy our 
ton zero interface IP. You'll see it right next to the INET flag right over here. I'm going to go ahead and grab this. And now if we come back over, we can just simply paste that in. So now we have the listening host IP address. Now the next thing that we need is the listening port flag, which is denoted as L port. And I'm actually, before this gets super long, I'm going to close this out just so that it's not in our way and causing the command to get junky on a bunch of lines. So we'll get rid of this. And now we just need the L port. Um, I'm going to set this to 443. Now the reason I'm doing this as 443 is the shell's actually coming from the target. So if you think about it, uh, the connection is going to be made outbound from the target's network. Now this is important when you start to do uh, a lot of different enterprise environments, um, you want to make sure that the outbound connections are not having these super weird destination ports because that would light up a security antivirus. Now, if there's an outbound connection going on port 443, which is just simply HTTPS traffic, outbound internet connections are allowed all the time and it doesn't look as funky. So that's just a little tip. Um, definitely a good habit to get into the use of using common ports when you're establishing a reverse shell. So we'll use port 443 for that. The next thing that we need is the dash F flag, which is going to denote the format of the payload generated. We want to say that it's going into a war file. Now that is because we want to generate this war file for the payload to upload. Then we just need to redirect the output. So we're going to use that um, less than character and we're going to send it to a file name of your choice. I'm just going to call this revshell.exe for clarity if I could type. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and run this, or sorry, not .exe, we want to call it .war because we're generating a war file to upload. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and then we should have our reverse shell. Okay, so now that it has generated the war file, um, we can even do a little LL here to see that the war file is in fact there and it has some contents in it, which is awesome. So now we can go ahead and upload this war file. So we will just click this browse button and then we're going to come to home and we're going to scroll down to wherever our box is at and then we want this revshell.war. So we're going to open this and then we're going to hit deploy. Now when you deploy it to the application it's not actually going to run the uh, reverse shell immediately. You need to browse to it to trigger the actual payload inside. And the actual payload is actually stored in a JSP file inside of the war archive. Now to actually execute our reverse shell, we need to be able to tell where our reverse shell is located at. Now we need the name of the JSP file, which actually includes our payload that was inside of the war uh, archive, you could think of it as. And we need to use this little utility called jar. So we can do jar tf and we're going to run that on the war file that we created. So if we do that, we can see that this is the name of the JSP file that it has created. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. So we'll just go ahead and copy all of that. Now, if we come back over to the Firefox browser, um, I already kind of pre-wrote some of this out, but what you're going to need to do is go to HTTP forward slash your IP address colon 8080 and then you're going to do forward slash the name of your war archive name of your JSP file that you just found. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I accidentally pasted too much. So it's going to look something like that. But before you do, you want to make sure that your reverse shell is listening. So let's go ahead and set up our reverse shell. So we want to do sudo nc and then dash l v n p and then 443 was the port that we specified. So that's just going to set up our uh, listener and it is all good to go. Now, when we browse to our JSP file containing our payload, it'll send us back a reverse shell. So let's go ahead and browse there and then come back over and boom, we have the reverse shell back from the machine and now we have persistent access on the target. So if we go ahead and do something like dir, we should be able to see um, that we are inside here. And I believe if we look around, we could probably go back 
um, a couple of directories here. I'm just going to go back one and then see what where we're at. Um, it looks like we can go to users, see what users are on here. Actually, quickly, let's check who we are. Who am I? Okay, so we're already running as NT Authority System. Um, that's the Windows equivalent of root or uh, your administrator. So I'm assuming we're going to find an admin user here. Yep, so we'll CD to this administrator user and then we will see here maybe if we go to they like to put it on the desktop and do dir again um, yeah it looks like we have flags so we'll just do type flags and i just realized i tried to type out a directory so we are going to cd to flags <laughs> And then we are going to see that there is the uh, the flag. It's two for the price of one because we got our shell as the admin user. So let's go ahead and just do type two and then star. So look at that. Boom. We have both the user.txt flag and we also have the root.txt flag as well. Okay, so we just wrapped that one up. Thank you guys again for watching through with me. Hopefully you learned a thing or two and had some fun along the way, but that is it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.